Okay, so I just want to come up with the perkongsian amalan terbaik untuk yang kimia XPN. Okay, terutamanya untuk yang paper 2 inilah. So when we come up with this topic, okay, of chemistry, so for sure we know that we must have a paper 1 and then we have a paper 2 and paper 3. So among all of these paper, so paper 1, Cikgu Cikgu kenalah bagi pelajar pelajar Cikgu buat banyak banyak latihan paper one. So because this one, okay, true exercise. So exercise made perfect. Okay. Then number two, we would like to coming out with paper two. So today we will emphasize on paper two as well. So paper two for sure we all know that they have six structural questions and then they have four essay question which is come from the session B and session C. So session B2, then session C2, they all together is 100 marks. The problems will actually generally come out from the, from the part of the essay questions, right? So students facing a very big, a big challenge when they want to ask to, ask to answer the essay question. Then paper three for sure, also practice math perfect case. So come up with this. So what is the important part with, about the paper two? So when we come up with paper two, they actually emphasize with the knowledge, understanding, the application skills, scientific skills, and synthesizing skills. So this is the one we would like to highlight on it. Then how are we going to help our students? Okay. So when we come up with this, then we say that they must have a tips to improve the student's answer. So number one, we try our best to let our student master the facts and the concept. So this is not easy because majority of the students, they just study chapter by chapter. They cannot see what is the relationship between the topics and topics. So although they master the facts and concept, but when they change, when we change a little bit with the questions, the patterns of questions, the student cannot apply. So this is a one. Okay, number two, so for sure, we always encourage our students to read the questions carefully. I think this is the main problem with the students nowadays because the student will always say that, teacher, when you discuss the questions, I found no problem. But when it coming out with the term, I answer by my own, I really don't know what is the meaning of the question. So after they need to read the questions, so we train the students to understand the task work. Normally what I do with the part of this, so every question, actually I read the questions together with my students and then I always ask them to underline the keyword. So in future, when they see this type of keyword, then they know they're going to answer it. Then number three, always try to train them to write a very short, accurate and precise answer rather than a flowery answer without points, okay? Then use the correct terms and spelling. So one of the part here, we would like to say that very important in chemistry is the spelling. So diffusion, okay? If you spell wrongly, no must be given a saponification. So they have so many terms that come up. If the students are not able to spell it correctly, then they will lose their marks. And then the correct terms as well. So Next part will be the calculation. So we always need to train our students to train them how to write a okay, proper and then in sequence of their working steps, especially for the calculation. We know they have some of the topics that involve a lot of calculations like thermal chemistry, okay, like the chapter three, the empirical formula. And then they come up with the, a lot of numerical problem solving. And then last but not least, for sure, is the functional and label diagram. I think that majority students, they don't like to draw. When they draw, they also forgot to how to label. So if we want to improve the student's answer and then their score, so we must work through these steps, okay, from day to day, from time to time. So today, because we come up with the paper two, then here I just choose some of the questions that majority students don't know how to answer. Maybe ourselves sometimes we also make a careless mistake when we answer the following question. 
So I just choose the several questions for, 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 for the discussions after that. Then now, I'll, before we go to the discussion for the questions, then I would like to point out here how we're going to help our students do revisions. Because we all know that, okay, from five, we have five chapters. Form 4, we have nine chapters all together. Then what is the relationship between each of the chapters? So number normally when we want to, when I want to help them to do revisions, I will always come up with these four chapters together. The structures of atoms, the chemical formula and equation, parity tables of elements and chemical bonds. Because this is the basic of the of chemistry. So when we want to do the revision, we just gather these four chapters together so that we can let our student to see the relationship between topics with the another topics. So if the student are not able to master the chemical formula or equation, actually they will find that a big problem with the periodic tables or elements. So if they cannot master periodic tables or elements, then they found that it's very difficult for them to come up with the chemical bonds. So here we would like to let them to see the relationship. Other than this, then how about the next part of the question whereby we say that the interactions between the chemicals, okay, we have the topic, a very, very challenging topic like electrochemistry. So we have a very, very challenging topic like electrochemistry over here, right? So when we're coming up with the topics of electrochemistry, so what is the main problem? So our students don't like these chapters. And then plus from five, we have oxidations and reductions. So almost when they're coming up with Okay, kita tunggu setiap cikgu ini ada gangguan line di sebelah Madam, Madam Lau. Hello, okay kah? Nah, kita tunggu dulu. I think yang madam side tu line terputus itu. Oh, okay. Hai semua. <laughs> Dengar suara Madam.
Okey, boleh dengar suara sekarang. Okey, dapat, dapat. Tadi ada suara tak? Tadi ada, sekarang eh, ni okey dah. Okey, okey. Mungkin mungkin live saya tak berapa bagus. <laughs> okey, teruskan. Okey, boleh, okay. boleh. Okey, so we coming out with the following for the carbon compound. So normally, carbon compound we would like to emphasize with the convention between a homologous series with another homologous series. So what I do normally, when I discuss the questions regarding the carbon compound, I will always ask the students to write down the homologous series. Okay, number two, always train them to write down the general formula. Always ask them to write down the functional group and the chemical formula of the compound. At the same time, try to write down the name of the compound so that the students are familiar with the interconvention between a homologous series with another one. So this is a part one of the carbon compound. The second part of the carbon compound, we would like to emphasize with the natural rubble. Okay, natural rubble. So when we're coming out with the natural rubber, so how is the formation of the natural rubber? And then we compare with the main one, the elasticity of the vulcanized rubber and unvulcanized rubber. So this is normally how we do the revision, okay, by chapters with chapters. So that we want to let the student to see the relationship between one chapter and, and with another one. And then the last one here, for sure, we would like to coming out with the very interesting one, the manufacturer substances in industrial and then the chemicals for consumer. So many students will say that, oh, this chapter is just like biology. We need to memorize a lot of things, right? So let them try to see that the usage of the, of the substance in industrial, so why they want to study about the sulfuric acid, why they want to study about the ammonia, because they want to use it to make the fertilizer. They have the benefit to the growth of the plant. And then try to bring them to the normal situation so that they are able to relate it with these two chapters. So finally, we have the chemicals for consumers. So these two chapters, okay, although we say that it's not applying a lot of the, of the concept science, but it's more to the applications of, of it. So what is the benefit when we study about the chemistry? So apart with this, so then we come up with the topics and how we're going to do the revision by chapters with chapters and then relationship with one and another one. So the here, I just want to point out some uh, very uh, interesting questions. So just share together with all of you. So how to answer for the questions over there. So I just, I don't do any animation so forever. So we just go through the questions together and then why they want to answer like this way. So question number one that I choose is, uh, this is a past year question. So question that I choose because I found out that majority students that have a problems to answer this type of questions. And then maybe sometime we just overlook a very simple question. So question number one is regarding that, okay, during the formations of carbon dioxide and magnesium oxide, so we say that all the valence electrons are involved in a chemical reaction. Okay. Then now, questions one, we always come up with the definition, yes. So one of the very, very important part in the XPN is regarding the definition. So teacher, do you train your student to uh, memorize the very important definition? Actually, one of the methods that I apply is I give my students the list of the um the, the definition list so all of the important uh, okay, terms that they will always use in a form 4 and form 5 I ask them to study from time to time then when we have free time then we can ask them to coming out with the test on the balance like uh, the, the the definition for for the specific term but for sure if they fail to answer it the punishments, we need to punish them to revive for three to five times, then after that, see whether they are able to come up with that. So definition for sure is a very, very important part in chemistry. But if the students actually is good in definition, their concept will be much more better. So normally I would encourage them to memorize the definition 
for the science of the chemistry term. So what is the meaning of valence electron? So we always come up with many students actually the thing about that valence electron is referring to the electron that is located at the electron shells of the atom. The thing about that is the electron that is located at the electron shell of the atom. But they forgot that valence electron actually refer to the outermost shells of a atom. So when we're coming out with this, we need to tell them electron is actually located at the so the electrons is actually located oh, what's wrong? not stable my line i think that okay quite suddenly quite suddenly i keep out from that i change this one i think Hmm. Maybe the program is not stable. I change okay, with another program. Okay, yeah, I change with another program. Maybe the program is not stable. It keeps stop stop me. <laughs> okay, so how about this one? So is it big enough for, for all the teachers to see it? Okay. Here, on, on. On, 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 yeah. So here, okay. So here I want you to come up with it. So when we refer to this, then we see that the electrons is at the outermost shells of the atom. So try to train our students about the importance important term huh important term so next one i would like to come up with this so this is a very common question here what is the purpose of the formations of chemical bonds so compound co2 and mgo they will be referring to the chemical compound they are formed to a chemical bond so when students see these questions they have one of the main problems coming up what is the purpose of the formations of the chemical bond that we always say that the student in general they will tell you that okay so that i want to let the atom to achieve a stable triplet or optic electron arrangement so they actually forgot about this question during the formations of the co2 and mgo sometimes ourselves also say that what is the purpose when an atom want to form a chemical bond then we always say that because the atoms want to achieve a stable triplet and optic electron arrangement. But here, the question come out with CO2 and MgO. Because the CO2 and MgO, they only, the atoms, the electron arrangement for the carbon and oxygen already have 2.4, 2.6. Magnesium is a 2.8.2, .2, the electron arrangement of the atom. Therefore, they actually, the atom, why they want to form chemical bond? Because the atom want to achieve optic electron arrangement. So the keyword will be there, optic electron arrangement. It cannot be uh, electron arrangement optic. So the terminology must be must be correct. So this is the one I found that is interesting question. So I would like to share with you that. So when we come up with that, so how we're going to tackle the question by this way. Then question number two. So the question number two is come up with the periodic table. So electron arrangement for the atom of the element T is a 2.1, right? So they say that T reacts with oxygen to form a formula of a T2O. So all of us know that when we refer to T, it's referring to the lithium. So lithium where with oxygen, it will form you with lithium oxide. So T2O is a lithium oxide. Okay, then now the question coming in with this, when the T2O reacts with water, it will form you with the colorless solutions. Then what can be observed when a limous paper is put into the solution? Nowadays, they, they, the question will be very smart. They will come up with what is the uh, observation that we see when a limous paper is put into the solution. They don't mention red, they don't mention blue. They just mention red, uh, they just mention the general limous paper. So 
some of the some of the students or maybe our students that have facing the problem. Okay, when they write Lima's paper, they know that this is an alkaline metal, then it will form the metal oxide that shows the basic property. So in general, they just say that it turns blue, turns blue. And then without the idea of what is the original color of the of the Lima's paper. Because we want to say the observation in general is come from the original color and change to the letter color. So the red Lima's paper turns blue. So this part we need to be emphasized to the, our students because sometimes they don't mention it. But if the question mentioned red, then students say that okay, turns blue. Okay. Then now another question for this. First on this observation, so what is the suitable inference that we can make back on the observation? So inference, therefore, we come up with what is the suitable explanation? Okay, initial conclusion or the explanation to our observations over here. So when the red Lima's paper turns blue, then what is the inference that can make back on the observation? Majority students, okay, all then we'll come up with one of the problems. They forgot about the question here is regarding solution. The thing about that is still referring to the metal. So here, may some of them, they just will say that this T is the alkaline metal. So is it a T is the alkaline metal? No, because here, the question here, the main point is coming up with this. What is the inference that you can make based on the observation means that the red Lima's paper turns blue. Then our answer can be, okay, the solution is the alkaline solution. So alkaline solutions is formed. Other than we can mention the alkaline solution, we also can say that the solution contains a hydroxide ion or the solution is the alkali. So all the answers can be acceptable in this. So then I say that this is a very interesting part. Then we can turn out with that. Okay. So settle with the questions too. So this is a simple uh, structural question. So I just point out some of the interesting part and then share with, with all of you. Then come up with the question there. Okay, question number three. Okay, question number three is regarding a thermal chemistry. So when we're coming up with thermal chemistry, it involves a calculation. It involves a calculation uh, that we need to show in detail, so state by state. So normally, how we're going to solve the problem? For sure, we train our students to read the question carefully, and then we want to highlight the keyword. So the keyword for sure is the excess zinc powder with 100 centimeter cubic of 0 0.25 molar copper 2 sulfate solution. So we need to point out the important keyword. Excess zinc powder with 100 centimeter cubic of 0 0.25 molar of copper 2 sulfate. So why we need to add in excess zinc powder? So why we need to add in excess zinc powder? So when we coming up with this idea, we add in excess zinc powder because because we want to ensure that all oh, copper is displaced from copper to sulfate solution. So this is the one we like to highlight why we add in excess. Then based on the diagram, we need to train our students to note down the important information. How we gonna to do with the calculation. So when we determine the heat on um, Displacements for sure. The volume and concentrations is very important because it's tell you the numbers of more of copper that will be displaced. Number two, the information is the initial temperature and the highest temperature. So and the highest temperature because we can find the change in temperature. So when you find the change in temperature, we are able to find the heat change. Heat change. Then. Normally, when we're coming up with this calculation question, then what we need to do. So we always train our students into three steps. So step is number one. When you, because the value for the heat of displacement is uh, delta H positive minus kilojoule per mole. 
we highlight with the unique kilojoule per mole, meaning that heat change over numbers of mole. So we always try that. Okay, when you see this type of questions, we come up with number one. Okay, found the numbers of mole. Okay, let's say we found the numbers of mole. So numbers of mole of copper two ion or the similar with the numbers of copper. So found the numbers of mole. Then number two, what are we going to find it? Okay, we need to find the heat change. Heat change, what is the formula? So for sure, it's the mc theta. So try to emphasize to them the value for m. m must refer to the mass of this solution because the problem here come up when they're coming out with the heat of combustion. When they're coming out with heat of combustion, because we say that the mass of the alcohol used, then the student will confuse. Uh, the mass of the alcohol is referring to the m, right? Okay, maybe to the m. Then they will confuse the mass of the alcohol. They use it in the formula. Okay, Q equal to mc theta. So we try to tell our students here, the m is the value either for the mass of the solution. If not, it must be referred to the mass of the water. Okay, mass of the water. So we try to note with that. Try to encourage our students to remember that. So C, specific heat capacity okay, of water, then theta. So when they substitute, for sure they are able to find that the unit. So always try and to write correctly. So with correct answer, with correct unit. Okay, correct unit. If they want to do convention, so let's say they want to change the joule to kilojoule. So we don't mind, we, we always ask them, Okay, one kilojoule equal to how many uh, how many kilojoule? So one 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 kilojoule equal to how many joules? So let them try to respond to it and then let them will be familiar to the unit. Okay. And then coming up with this, so always tell them what is the relationship between the numbers of mole and the heat change. So delta H, because the unit is kilojoule per mole, right? Then is a heat over numbers of mole. So they can come up with the answer in the unit of joule per mole, or they also can come in with the answer in a kilojoule per mole. But the most important, the thing here is, make sure that they write down the negative sign. How they must write down the negative sign. So this question, they have two points. Okay, point one, okay, point two, point three, and point four. Point three, they just want to see whether the student able to substitute. And then point four, they want to see whether the students are able to get the correct answer with the negative sign and with the correct unit. So try to guide them to write down state by state. So in detail. So negative sign must be mentioned because negative sign in this case it will be referring to the exothermic ration. So finish with the question regarding the heat of rations here. Then I'll like you to coming out with the, another one over here. So another one. So another one we would like to highlight with the observation. Students don't like to come up with the observation questions, right? So state one observation for the ration here. Yeah. yeah. If the student don't write the unit, minus my not. Which part of the student they don't write down the unit? Because student don't like the Yeah, which part? All the state must write or only the last step? Okay, um, normally we will, okay, if the numbers of mole, they don't write down the unit of mole, it's okay. For the heat, for the heat, if, if this one, we always encourage them to write down the unit, okay, write down the unit. If not, some of the students, they jump state, okay, if jump the state, so immediately for sure, they want to come in here with the last answer. Last answer for sure must have the correct unit, how must have the correct unit, yeah. So without the unit, the last one, delta H, will be minus mark, is it? Yes. Yeah. The last one without unit, for sure, there will be that one mark. Without negative sign. Yeah. Ah. Is it just the unit without negative? Yes, also did that one mark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because the last point, they must have a negative and a kilojoule per mole. Or negative or joule per mole. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Okay, so we can continue. So for, for the next question, so stick one observation for the Russian. So just now we come up with the keyword of 
excess steam powder is added into the copper two sulfide solutions, right? So there have many, many possible answers for, for, for this observation. So one of it, they can tell that the blue solution turns colorless because excess steam powder is adding, meaning that all copper is displaced, right? Therefore, the blue solution will turn color. This one for sure is the best answer among all. Other than that, they also can tell that the brown solid is formed, right? The formations of the brown solid, or even they can tell that the container feels hot. So in pepper tree, we accept the container feels hot, but in pepper tree for sure cannot. Lah. So we come up with this container feels hot, or we can also come up with the temperature increases. So temperature here will refer to the temperature of the solution, so increases. So this is the one we come up with the observation. But many students, they have a problem when they write out this observation. Number one, what is the main problem here? They don't write solid, but they write brown precipitate. How they will write brown precipitate. So precipitate, can we apply the precipitate the terms over here? Precipitate, it only come out when the double decomposition reactions is carried out. So when, two, when Let's say when the last two nitrate solutions is mixed with the sodium chloride solution, okay, a white precipitate is formed. So that is the formation of precipitate. So try to encourage them to just mention the physical state of the salt uh, of the substance. Okay. Another one that is a very, very common question. Just now we have mentioned it, but majority students they have a problem in coming up with answering this question. So why is a zinc powder added until excess? Students actually only come up with the answer like, okay, to ensure copper two ion is displaced, uh, to ensure copper two ion is reduced, to come ensure copper is displaced from its salt solution. In this case, because we add in the keyword of excess, so once we have the keyword of excess, meaning that, okay, the powder, the zinc powder that is adding is enough for it to displace all the copper from the solution. So the keyword all must be there. Huh? The keyword all must be there. So all of the copper to ion is displaced, all of the copper to ion is reduced, or all of the copper is displaced from its solution. So this question is very interesting. So I just point out the common mistake that were always made by our majority of the students. So many, many students would make a careless mistake like this. Okay. So coming up with this, then we can go proceed to the another one. So the structural question. Okay, this one is a previous question. Okay, so the uh, diagram. So, uh, sorry, madam. Yes. I want to yeah. ask one question for the questions just now. Yeah. Uh, regarding the answer, the number three, right? All copper is displaced from its salt solutions. How about the student? If the student writes yes, all copper two ion is displaced from its salt solutions. All okay. copper two ions. Okay. So when we come here with this, because they already accept all of the copper two ion is displaced. So if they add in from its salt solution, it's okay. Doesn't matter. Or even they mention right. that from copper two sulfide solution is okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, okay, welcome. With them now, you mean just yes. now you don't put the word all, don't have marks, is it for this? Yes, correct. Yeah, must have the keyword of the all. Yeah, must have compulsory keyword is the all. Yeah, okay. Another one is just now you mentioned the container feels hot in pepper two is accept, but pepper three cannot accept. Why? Yeah? Yes. Because the pepper three, they must coming out with the observation based on the diagram. Because based on the diagram, when you hold the paper, we cannot feel it. It is hot. Oh, because okay. the paper, ah, yeah, yeah. Based on the diagram, the observation. For yeah, the based on the diagram. Yeah, paper three for sure is based on the diagram. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. You okay. Very much. okay. Welcome. Welcome. So we'll come up with the questions number four. I think this part, in general, we also will will come up with the some. Sometimes we also do the mistake for this following question. So here is the one the conversations with, regarding the. How to make a salted fish? So normally, how are we gonna to make a salted fish? So, what is the substance that should be added into a salted fish? Then we normally we just say that ah yeah, this type of question you also don't know, man. You add in the salt into it. So here it will be coming out a very very common mistake for this one. So what are the substance is added into salted fish? Then in general, all of us will think about that. 
Okay, we just add in the salt. Okay, when we add in the salt, is it acceptable? No, because this question, they come, if you give me the keyword of the salt, it will be a too common. Therefore, they accept table salt or a specific name for the chemical. That is the sodium chloride. Huh? Sodium chloride, because normally we say that, what is the substance that is added in the salted fish? Okay, it's the salt. So here, come up with sodium chloride or we come up with the table salt. Okay. Then number two, a very common question come up with this. How are we going to, to answer this one? Explain why the substance is added into the fish. Why the sodium chloride is added into the fish? Normally in our mindset here is, Okay, this question will come in with the functions of the sodium chloride, right? Then we always tell our students here, okay, because the sodium chloride, it can draw the water out from the microorganism and then it can retard the growth of the microorganism, right? But now, what is the main idea of the questions over here? Why the substance is added to the fish? Because why we need to add sodium chloride into the fish? So, number one, we're going to mention that there are their, their, their aim as a preservative or make the fish last longer, prevent the spoilage of the fish or preserve the fish. Okay, this is the one. Give a reason or the aim why we want to add in the sodium chloride. Number two, then what is the function of sodium chloride? Then absorb the water from the microorganism or it can retard the growth of the of the bacterial activity. So this is the uh, two part of the questions here. So which I found interesting because in general, we sometimes we also forget that about that. What is the purpose we add in the sodium chloride into the fish? So here, the purpose, and then how the sodium chloride can preserve the fish. Okay, so this is the one. Another one here is a very, very interesting as well. Okay, this is actually the past year question, so last year, so which part, which I want to point out the interesting part. Okay, so here to show you the two uh, cleaning agents, P and Q in seawater. So based on this diagram, which one is more effective? Okay, then you will tell me that, okay, P is more effective because the oily sand is removed. That the cleaning agent Q is less effective because the oily stain still remains, right? Then now the question here is, what is the seawater? So student only study soft water, student only study hard water. So how about the seawater over here? So seawater means that a example of hot water in seawater that contains magnesium ion and calcium ion. So students actually can predict that what is the cleaning agent P. So cleaning agent P is most probably will be detergent, right? And then the cleaning agent Q for sure is a soap because they only study two types of the cleaning agent in form five, the soap and detergents, right? They're coming up with the following question. Okay, interesting question. Okay, then come up with it. Based on the observation, Explain the difference in the clean, uh, cleaning, uh, cleansing actions of the cleaning agent P and Q. So the question here, they want you to explain the differences. So which one is more effective and which one is less effective? So this question we will highlight with this. The question is explain the difference. Explain the difference. So we need to give, uh, give a comment about the, the cleansing actions of the cleaning agent P and Q. Give comment means that which one will be more effective. It's not depends on which one will be better. It come up with the keyword of effective or not effective. Because we all know that both soap and detergent actually is a good cleaning agent but it depends on the situations, right? So here, we're coming out with the keyword here. Explain, comment on the difference. Comment on the difference. So part one, we come out with this. The cleaning agent P is more effective than Q. So 
point one, no problem, because we based on the observation, we can see it very, very clearly. And coming up with number two, why they show you the difference? Why they show you the difference? So come up with this. Then I would like to point out here for point two, for point two, they want to see the comparison. They want to see the comparison. Okay, we need to highlight with the keyword of the anion or the ion P. Because we know that when the detergent ion is ionized in water, for detergent ionized in water, it forms you with the detergent ion and the sodium ion. If the soap dissolves in water, it forms you with the soap ion and then the sodium ion. Therefore, the sodium, or therefore, we would like to look at this, is that the sodium ion from the detergent and the soap were involved in the cleaning age of cleansing action? No, right. Then we highlight with the keyword here. Because of what? Why P is more effective? Because the N ion of P reacts with calcium or magnesium ion to produce soluble soap. Or N ion P okay, reacts with calcium and magnesium ion. Okay, no comma, no scum or no precipitate is produced. It's only answer until this part, we still cannot get the point number two. Because point number two, they want you to explain the difference. So we need to combine them together. Therefore, we're going to explain that N ion of Q reacts with calcium ion and magnesium ion to produce the insoluble salt or scum or precipitate. So in general, how to solve the point number two, we must have the keyword of the N ion of P, N ion of Q. Okay, they must have the keyword number two, react, react. And then calcium ion, magnesium ion. And then one is form scan, another one does not form scan. So this is the part that majority students lost the mark for the part here because they don't remember that they're going to mention the keyword of the N ion. Because they just mentioned that P react with calcium ion and magnesium ion to form to form a soluble salt, while Q react with calcium ion and magnesium ion to produce the insoluble salt. So this is the part that will miss out the mark because without the keyword of the anion or the ion P or ion Q. Okay, so this is the interesting part with the question here. Then next one, the next one. This one is even interesting. They tell you that the soap ion consists of two parts. Okay, one is a hydrophilic, another one is hydrophobic. So now we're going to, so the keyword already tell you that, so hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So hydrophilic means that love water, dissolve in water. Hydrophobic for sure is hate water, cannot dissolve in water, that is dissolved in breeze. So the question here, they ask you to draw a label diagram. Draw a label diagram to show the solubility of the soap in water, right? Then, and the three stand on close. Okay. So here, you're going to come up with a diagram. So the majority, what is the problem here? Because they say that to show the solubility of the both parts in the water. So this diagram, majority of us, all the students, they forgot to draw water. So without water, without water, so if you don't draw the dash line for water, meaning that you already, you already cannot get the point for the functional diagram. Or if you don't draw the dash line, you cannot get the functional diagram. Okay. So if you don't draw the dash line, for sure you never label as water then immediately you, you will lost two marks, right? Okay, and then number two, so we draw the grease with the cloth or not, doesn't matter, so we draw the grease. So the head, the head actually is a hydrophilic, so it's gonna to draw outside, and then the tail is the hydrophobic. We need to draw it, then dissolve in the grease, then dissolve in the grease. So what is the reminder for the part over here? For the reminder over here, the hydrophobic must be totally dissolved in the grease. You cannot draw halfway. So the head halfway and then the tail halfway. No. 
the tail must be totally dissolved in the grease. And then the head, the hydrophilic part, is outside the grease. Then after that, label as hydrophilic and hydrophobic part. So this part, students, because they don't draw dash line for water, so they don't label it, the majority of them, they will lose the mark of it. And some of the students even, uh, uh, some of the, the students even, uh, they will analyze the questions wrongly. This, this question is, is come up with that. If they don't study, come up with the second part, so some majority students, they don't read the question till the end. They just say that, okay, I get it. I get the key. So the N ion of the soap consists of two parts, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. They would draw the long tail one with the with the with the head C double bone O. So once they interpret the question wrongly, then they're totally out of this diagram. So this is a very interesting part of the question that come out in the chapter 5.5. Done with this, then we can proceed to the another interesting um uh, structural question. Okay, this is the one. So this is regarding the preparation of the standard solution or standard solution. So given that the stock solution is two molar of sulfuric acid, so pro provided with a pipette, volumetric plus and the distilled water. So must pass on the apparatus given you prepare the standard solution through the dilution method. So the keyword of the question will be like this. Okay, can you calculate the volume of the stock solution? So stock solution is a two molar of sulfuric acid. Okay, needed to prepare 250 centimeter cubic of 0 0.2 molar of sulfuric acid. So stock solution, so higher concentration of the sulfuric acid need to be diluted in into water so that it can change with the 0 0.2 molar sulfuric acid. So students don't have a problem to come up with this calculation. M1, V1 equal to M2, V2. So in general, no problem. So they are able to substitute and then they want to find out the answer. But the question here, sometimes they will write it as a CM minus 2. Yeah. Suara putus-putus, madam. Ya, yeah, kan? Mungkin line saya sini tidak berapa bagus. Hello? Hello? Okay, is it okay now? Better? Okay, okay. Okay. okay, so we continue. Okay, we continue. So for the questions here, you need to coming out with the stock solution. Stock solution. So stock solution is uh stock solution here is a two molar. So this is a two molar. Okay, so it's a two molar. When you're coming out with the two molar of the of the okay sulfur acid, then you can come out with the 25. So this part no problem. All of us don't have a problem in the calculations as well. We just substitute and then we come out with the answer. So how about the next one? Okay, the next one is a very, very challenging one. So can you describe briefly the steps to prepare these solutions by using the apparatus listed? Just now, they tell you that you must use a pipette, you must use a volumetric flux, right? So there is a two of it. Then how are you going to, to describe the preparation of the standard solution? 250 centimeter cubic of 0 0.2 molar of the sulfuric acid. So now we have the idea. We need to get 25 centimeter cubic of 2 molar sulfuric acid. So what is a suitable apparatus that can be used? For sure, is pipette. If we want to prepare 250 centimeter cubic of the solution, the volume, what is a suitable apparatus that we can use? Volume metric flux. So how we can get exactly 250 centimeter cubic? We need to add the distilled water to the calibration mark or the graduation mark. So here is the keyword we need to touch with that. So number one, Martel. Keyword pipette, or we measure by using pipette, must mention 25 centimeter cubic or two molar sulfuric acid. If not, then we need to mention 
pi pack 25 centimeter cubic of stock solution. Because the stock solution is referring to two molar of sulfuric acid. Next, transfer it into mass mentions the volume of the volume metric flux. Then last, we add distilled water until it reach to the graduation mark or the calibration mark. So because the keyword here only asks you to describe briefly. So if described briefly, it's just coming out with the J1. So 25 centimeter cubic stock solution transfer into 250 a uh, 250 centimeter cubic volumetric plus eight is the water till calibration. So this is a part of the of the part. They're not that popular in the topic of the AC basis because normally when we come up with AC and basis, we emphasize with the pH value, strong AC, weak AC, rather than the preparation of the standard solutions, right? Okay, and now coming out with another one. Another one question here, are we come up with how are we gonna to find out this explanation? So I give you the uh, keyword for the question. Let's say 12.50 centimeter cubic of 0 0.2 molar sulfuric acid can neutralize the 25 centimeter cubic of 0 0.2 molar of potassium hydroxide solutions, right? Then come up with that. If the sulfuric acid is replaced with 0 0.2 molar nitric acid, can you predict the volume of the nitric acid that will be used to neutralize potassium hydroxide solution? Explain why. So when we come up with this question, for sure, we would like to say that, okay, sulfuric acid 2.50 centimeter cubic of 0 0.2 molar, because the sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid, then if we replace it by using a same molarity of monoprotic acid, what is the volume of nitric acid that needs to be used in this experiment? So for sure, we come up with diprotic, monoprotic, monoprotic, the concentrations of hydrogen ion is less, is half than the sulfuric acid. So if we want to get the same numbers of more of hydrogen ion, or same concentration of hydrogen ion like the sulfuric acid, we need to double up the volume. So the question here, here number one, predict the volume of nitric acid. So what we can come up with this, we can point out 25 centimeter cubic or just say that double the volume or twice the volume. Then why we need to twice the volume? We need to twice the volume because of explanation must mention for both. So now again, the explanation question, like this type of questions that involve a comparison, we must compare for both. Huh? We must compare for both. We cannot just explain with one direction, let's say like suffering AC, is diprotic acid and then it can produce a one more of hydro a one more of sulfuric acid it can produce uh, two moles of hydrogen ion when it ionizes in water we only explain only part one with the sulfuric acid so this is the type of question that you need to compare for both must compare for both okay so very popular now the pattern of the of the questioning by this way compare for both so sulfuric acid Diprotic acid, nitric acid, okay, monoprotic acid. If the student has forgot to come up with the keyword of terms like diprotic acid and the monoprotic acid, actually they also can give the definition for the diprotic acid and monoprotic acid. Then the sentence will be longer, but it's still coming out with the same idea. If they don't want to write diprotic acid, they just say that suffering acid will produce a uh, two. Uh, moles or two hydrogen ions when when ionizes completely in water a nitric acid produce uh, one nitric acid molecule produce one hydrogen ion when ionizes completely in water also acceptable as the meaning of diprotic and monoprotic acid right then now coming up with point number three why so we say that because the concentration of hydrogen ion in sulfuric acid is double than that in high nitric acid. But some of them, they will like to write this one. Because the number of hydrogen ions in sulfuric acid is twice or double than that in nitric acid. If they only mention 
number of hydrogen ion. Okay, numbers of hydrogen ion is not acceptable here because the keyword here is mainly count for the concentration. So they need to mention number of hydrogen ion per unit volume. They need to mention number of hydrogen ions per unit volume. That will be similar with the meaning of concentrations of hydrogen ion. This is the one. Come up with this so they can come up with a very short answer concentrations of hydrogen ion or the number of hydrogen ion per unit volume. So, do the comparison, then it's end up with the structural question. So, I just choose a, a simple structural question. Then, for the next, okay, any questions you want to, to ask? Okay, maybe uh, yeah, question. madam. Hello, yes. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I want to ask for point number two, right? Can we replace by the equation? For example, uh, sulfuric acid produce two more of H plus and sulfuric acid, and then HNO3 produce H plus and NO3 minus. And they, they right. explain your uh, equation. Okay, because you explain in equation, then it cannot be acceptable. Because the question is explained, meaning that they want to be in a sentence. All right. Must okay. Yeah. Right, thank you. Okay. Welcome. Okay, so we can proceed to the next. Okay, no question, then we proceed to the next. Okay. So how about the next question? So next question is coming up with the ACA questions. How is it coming up with the ACA questions? So they say that the extractions of the iodine for the seaweed is by using the XC divide hydrogen peroxide solution. Okay. Okay, so they show that this iodine ion create with hydrogen peroxide and then the plus 2H positive, then it gets the iodine and then 2H2O. So based on this equation, so can state the change in oxidation number of iodine, write the half equation for oxidation rations, state the oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Okay, majority students that have a problem with this. Okay, how I gonna to find out that which one is the is the oxidizing agent, which one is reducing agent, especially when they're coming out with halogen and the highlight ion. So here I have a small trick so the, um, then can let the student remember easily when they're coming out with halogen like fluorine, like bromine. So we all know that. When we write the chlorine, C H L O R I N E, bromine like B R O M I N E. So, why the chlorine and bromine always act as the oxidizing agent? Because oxidizing agent actually they need to receive electron. So, let, let them have a look with the name, B R O M I N E. So, at the end of the of the of the keyword is I N E. I need electron. I need electron. So they will receive electron. So they will act as the oxidizing agent most of the time. Then how about the highlight ion like chloride? Uh, not 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 yet complete. Okay, so correct curve one two three. After that, we need to label the forty centimeter uh, centimeter cubic. So we draw it by using a dashed line. If you draw it by using a solid line, then people will confuse with it. You see the experiment one two three. They already complete at thirty fifty five and ninety seconds. So dashed line. Then the Last one, you're gonna to coming out with the time shown the corresponding with the volume 40 centimeter cubic. So correct curve, you're gonna to label one, two, three. Okay, then after that you write down 40. The last one must be correspond. How huh? must be correspond to the time? So label 30, 55, and 19. Okay, so don't draw it line until it is constant and don't draw it because the rations is not yet complete. So this is the four marks and majority students that have a problem to solve it because they don't understand at this period of time, the rations is not complete. So try to 
are trying to guide them with this keyword. So 40 centimeter cubic means the fraction is not complete. So how are we going to sketch the graph? Okay. Okay, then now coming up with the second part of the question is not uh, the ordinary calculation questions, but they want them to do more. So write the chemical equation for directions one and two. Because one and two, they use a different concentrations, right? Then now, okay, so a very smart student, after they do the part B, they immediately go back and do the correction of the graph because they will know that, okay, the both experiment will not produce a similar volume of gas at the end of the experiment. Oh, so here, come up with this calculation. So write down the balance equation, no problem. So for this question, gonna to come up with oh the equation, sorry, the equation. For equation, normally we have two marks for equation. Equations is a very expensive question in explain. Point number one is given to the correct chemical formulas of the reagents and product, whereby the points number two will be always be given to the balance huh? to the balance. So if the student able to do this, they can have two. So for this question, what they want you to find out here compare the actual volume of gas released in set one and set two okay need to support with calculation so from here they will come up with this calculate the numbers or more of hcl in set one hcl in set two because the concentrations is different so that the numbers or more will be different point number four must be given to the comparison with their mole ratio so two moles of hydrochloric acid it will produce one more of co2 so if 0 0.01 mole is used of here is used for sure it will only produce 0 0.005 more of carbon dioxide so they found the volume and then step number two if hydrochloric now is 0 0.005 more then the numbers of more of carbon dioxide that will be produced will be the half times with 24 will get 0 0.06. Many students, after they do the calculation until here, they stop because they say that, oh, done already because so many things I do for the six months, I count. I count not only for one time, but I count for two times already. So everything is done, but they forgot that the keyword of compare. Not compare. They forgot about the keyword of compare. When they come up with the keyword of compare, they're going to give the comment. So meaning that the comment could be the set one produce a higher or double volume of gas than set two. They need to give the comment, but for sure, it's give the comment like double volume of the gas will be much more better compared to higher because here it's not only higher but it's double. But they just accept if the student are able to know that 0 0.12 is higher than 0 .0, 0 0.06, that's say metric cubic. Another common mistake they were made by students is a unit called DM minus 3. DM3 per mole. Funny, funny answer also come out with this part. So try to uh, try to remind our them from time to time uh, the volume of the gas is only decimal meter cubic DM3 or centimeter cubic or CM3. They have only two units for that. Okay. So done with this then we come up with the next question so next question i think is a common one then compare the rate of ration between the two sets of experiments and explain by using collision showing okay, this one nothing new okay, because uh, we are very familiar with this then here i just want to point out here when we do the comparison by using rate it must be the term of higher or lower, higher or lower. It cannot be faster or slower. It must be higher and lower. Then number two, okay, number two. Point number two, we always highlight with the with the factor. Oh, we always highlight with the factor. Why uh, experiments one has a higher rate of ration? Because concentration of the hydrochloric acid in set one is higher. Then what will happen to the next? The number of hydrogen ions. These students they just come up with numbers of uh, hydrogen ions. Okay, in set one is higher. No, when we coming up with the explanation by collision theory, the concept of concentration must be uh, 
per volume. Prof must mention per unit volume. So this is a very important keyword here. So numbers of hydrogen ion per unit volume is higher in set one. Okay, so we compare higher, lower, higher, lower. Then point number four here, students have a problem with the term frequency of collisions and then frequency of effective collisions. So this is a term. Some of the students, they will say that effective, okay, effective frequency collision. So they, 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 just, they just cannot remember the term of this, okay? So try to guide them frequency of collision, frequency of effective collision. So all the time we apply it. Then we come up with this. What are the particles that are involved in the reaction? So in general, we like to say that if the substance is a solid, Reacted solid substances react with the acid. So very easy for us to find the reacting particle. So we just write down the name of the solid particle, calcium carbonate, and then from acid, they must have hydrogen ion. So the calcium carbonate and hydrogen ion. If they're coming out with zinc powder and with hydrochloric acid, then what are the reacting particles? We just pick the name for the for the solid particle, zinc, they react with hydrogen ion. That's it. So AC is the most common one. How well, most common one? If AC, they must take the hydrogen, hydrogen ion. So it's easy way for us to write down the write down the reacting particle. So must get the correct term of this frequency of collision, frequency of effective collision, and they must able to state the correct reacting particle. So one of the methods that they can improve their reacting particle is through, through the writing of ionic equation. When they write ionic equation, for sure they will find that what are the writing particles or the particles that are really involved in the reaction. Then questions, the following, we can go through very fast. So why is the factors in two and three? Just now we say that there is a size, there is a size of calcium carbonate. So why two is higher than three? Because the size of calcium carbonate in two is smaller. We don't want them to copy the answers like because the set two use calcium carbonate powder, set three use calcium carbonate granulate. If they just copy from the question, meaning that they don't actually uh, compare it, make the inference, make the inference for the factor, they just copy. So here must come up with the size of calcium carbonate in set two is smaller. Do the comparison. Don't mention only small. If small, no comparison. Then what will happen if the size is smaller? That means that total surface area of the calcium carbonate is larger. So many of them they will forgot to write down the keyword of total surface area. They just write surface area. So must have the keyword of the total over there. Must have the keyword of the of the totals over there. Then point four and point five will be similar. So we will encourage them to use the term higher, lower, or higher, lower. So for these questions like the rate of rations, compare the rate of ration, one of the method for sure, this is a traditional method, they can write in a paragraph. Actually, they have a method whereby they can actually explain it in the table. In table means that they build up a table, rate or ration, okay, set one, set two, or two and three. Okay, what is the factor? Okay, so the factor is the okay, size of calcium carbonate. In the table, they only mention smaller and bigger. Total surface area of calcium carbonate in the table, they only mention okay, larger and smaller. Frequency of collision between the hydrogen ion and calcium carbonate. So set two higher, set three lower. Frequency of effective collision. So set two higher, set three lower. They also can ex express their answer in a table form. It depends on. It actually depends on uh their their the way of answering questions. So both are acceptable. Okay, finish with the questions eight. So not challenging that well, right? Okay, only the part A, the graph. Yeah, the graph actually shows the students of marks. Yes. Hey, good. Uh, Mr. Lau, I want to ask, uh, if, if the one for the catalyst hydrogen peroxide, what is the reacting particle for step number? Hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is a hydrogen peroxide molecule. Yes. Hydrogen oh, peroxide. 
Now, step four, number 4.4 still have to write or not? Because yes, no. you mentioned, no need to write number four. One, two, three, and then skip to five. Because there's you one. Want to, if if you, for, the, for the factor of catalyst, right? Yeah. If for uh, the factor of catalyst. Actually, one is the reacting particle, what we write for hydrogen peroxide, and another one is the, the point for catalyst. Okay, if they're coming up with the with the hydrogen peroxide, the reacting particles will be hydrogen peroxide. And then if you want to discuss the factor of catalyst, point number four will change. More hydrogen peroxide can overcome the lower activation energy. More hydrogen peroxide molecule can overcome the lower activation energy. Then we come back with the point number five. So if that is the factor of catalyst, we change this sentence to more hydrogen peroxide molecule can achieve the lower activation energy. It's not immediately jump to find they have enough sentence for that. You're going to, to explain that because when the activation energy is lower, meaning that now we have more particles can achieve the lower activation energy. You need to replace by that sentence. Yes. Uh, the word molecule need to measure? Yes, you need to measure the molecule because it's the particles. But why calcium carbonate and zinc no need to mention atom or? Okay, because there is a general common common one, then you no need to mention that because it mentions with the hydrogen ion. Yeah. How about sodium thiosulfate? Which pardon? How about if with hydrogen ion with sodium thiosulfate? So the okay. if, yes, the, if the sodium thiosulfate solutions with the hydrogen ion, then because the sodium thiosulfate solution is a soluble salt, right? It can ionize in water to produce a sodium ion and thiosulfate ions, right? Therefore, the reacting particles will be thiosulfate ions and hydrogen ion. Mm, okay, okay. Okay, huh? okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, hello, uh, I want to ask uh, one question. Yes. Yeah, yeah, regarding point number four, the frequency of collision between hydrogen ion and the calcium ion we can replace by can we replace by carbonate ion or HCO3 minus? HCO3 minus cannot. This part because you just refer to the reactive particles here, we refer to the chemical reaction. So we accept for only calcium carbonate. Because the calcium carbonate, we say that it's insoluble in water. So when they react, the hydrogen ion will react with the calcium carbonate. Okay. It cannot be replaced with the carbonate ion as well. Or the hydrogen carbonate. Cannot. All right, all right, thank you. Okay. Okay, so this this is the one that the, the easy way for us to find out it is we write out the ionic equation. So maybe we write for, for a few times then let them let the students see the picture. Therefore, they are able to find out that what are the reacting particles in the reaction. Okay, so better with the questions number eight. So I want to come up with another two essay questions here. So questions number nine. Okay, I want to check that. Okay, I think it's enough. One question, 15 minutes is okay. So questions number nine here is regarding the electrochemistry. chemistry. So you see, um, oxidation and reduction, very popular. Electrolysis, also very popular questions in the SPM. So here, they come out with the aqueous solutions W. The table shows the result obtained from two sets of experiments by using the solutions W. So greenish yellow gas is released. Okay, colorless gas is released at the cathode. So colorless gas is released at the both anode and cathode. So, because the keyword of the greenish yellow gas, therefore the solutions W must contain chloride ion. Must contain a chloride ion. Therefore, we would like to highlight with this: the solutions W must be a soluble chloride salt. How must be a soluble chloride salt? It can be hydrochloric acid, potassium chloride, sodium chloride, whatever, and whatever. And now, we would like to coming up with this. So. When we highlight, how we're going to analyze the questions that always involve with the electrolysis. For me, I will ask them to have a look with the electrode. When they see carbon electrode, meaning that they don't have a factor of type of electrode. Then, uh, 
they can come up with see whether the questions have the factor of concentrations of ion. So concentrations of ion only exist when normally we say that it's at anode when they have chloride, bromide, and iodide ion, whereby the concentration is higher than 0 0.1 molar. Or more than 0 0.1 molar, we all consider it as a extra extra concentrated solution. So in general, we like to do this assumption. Therefore, here when you see greenish yellow gas means that set one they have a factor of concentrations of ion. If they don't have a factor of concentrations of ion, then we go back to the positions of ion in the electrochemical series. So when we do the analysis, start with electro, then go for concentrations of ion. The last one for sure is the positions of ion in the electrochemical series. So what is the questions about? I think this question is very straightforward. Suggest a suitable solution W. Compare and contrast the observation on the product form and explain your answer. Compare for sure we want to find the differences. Contrast for sure we want to find the similar one. So we can come up with any suitable one. We can come up with any suitable uh, solution. So just now I mentioned you must have the chloride salt. You must choose a soluble kinase to that. Okay. Yeah. So is it the can you see the screen right now? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. I think oversight here, the line is not very good, very naughty today. Okay, so come up with this one. So for the set one, then it will be chlorine, okay, chlorine, because this is come up with the set one. All set one, chlorine. Cathode for sure is a hydrogen, because the hydrogen ions, okay, and the potassium ion move to the cathode. So hydrogen ion will be discharged. So set two, anode will be oxygen, then cathode will be hydrogen. So we're coming out with the explanations over here. So chloride ion is discharged, okay? So why they have a formation of the chlorine gas over here? So at the end of, we need to explain for this. So why they have formations of chlorine? So because the chloride ion is discharged. So must mention the keyword of discharge, especially when you want to explain for the electrolysis. Must have the keyword and must do the comparison. Because the concentration of Cl minus ion is higher than hydroxide ion. If you don't put down the ion, it doesn't matter because the formula, formula ion means we understood is the is the ion. So for set two, why? Because hydroxide ion discharge. So this time the reason because oxygen of OH minus is lower than Cl minus in the electrochemical series. So must mention for all of this, or must mention for all of this electrochemical series in detail. In detail. Then coming up with the, another one here, how about the cathode? So for cathode, if you write down the formula ion, doesn't matter. You will tell me that hydrogen H positive is discharged because the position of H positive is lower than K positive in the electrochemical series. Without the words of ions or not, it's okay. But this is for some of them when they write down the name, they just write hydrogen is discharged because the position of hydrogen is lower than potassium in the electrochemical series. Then they have a problem. If they write down the name, they must write down the keyword of ion. They must write down the keyword of ion. So this is the one. Okay. I don't think that this is the big problem. So move forward to the next one. So now by using a uh, solution W, but stick the ion presence and then the write down the half equations at the anode and cathode. So this is depends on what is the correct uh, salt that you, you mentioned before. They write down the ion, then you write down the half equation. So name and then you write down the half equation. Okay. So one, two, one, two, three, one. One, two, three, four. So this one is the same, so they are considered as one. So settle with the over here, then we can proceed with the next one. Next one is challenging, actually. Okay, 
some of the students lost the marks when they don't actually follow the steps of the experiment. So when we come in with questions, see here. Table shows the experiments to determine the positions of metal A, B, C in the electrochemical field. When we have a look at this diagram, we already come up with the idea this one must be come up with displacements of metal. A put into solution B and C. B is put into the solution A and C. Okay, C is put into the solutions A and B. Okay, when you come up with this, which metal is the most electropositive? So the most electropositive metal for sure it will be C because it can displace A and B. Okay. A followed by A because A only can displace B. B is a less electropositive because it cannot displace any. So we based on the electropositivity, so we can just write down two. Two, one, zero. They, we, when they have more tips, means that the metal will be more electropositive, right? So the following here, we we'll come up with this. Okay, based on the table 5.2, can you arrange the metal A, B, and C according to the expanding order of electropositivity? Suggest the metal A, B, C, and their respective nitrate salt solution. So this is a question about suggest the metal A, B, C, and their respective nitrate salt solution. The questions already mentioned that you need to give the nitrate, how nitrate, you need to give the nitrate, must be nitrate, okay? So here we would like to come up with what is the arrangements of it. The question say that ascending order, ascending order means it must start from the less electropositive to the most electropositive. So less electropositive, it can be a B, okay, it's B, then followed by A, the last one is a C. Then after that, this is the question, suggest the A, B, C. So for these suggestions here, as long as it can follow the sequences, huh? as long as it can follow the sequences, then it can assume that, okay, it can be acceptable. So as long as the metal that you choose is follow the sequences, not necessarily use, use the zinc or the zinc nitrate solution or the copper or copper two nitrate solution. It can be coming up with a magnesium nitrate, okay? It can be come up with a silver nitrate, okay? It can be, okay. This one, okay, sorry. This one can be, okay, lead two nitrate, okay? This one can be a silver nitrate, this one can be zinc nitrate. So as long well as the sequences is correct, then it can be acceptable over here. So A, so B is a less electro, least electropositive metal, right? In this case, we can say copper, copper two, nitrate. If you don't want to write down the name, the formula, you can write down the name. Because the keyword is suggest. So followed by A, A is more electropositive, so you can come out zinc, zinc, so zinc nitrate solution. Then C, if you don't want to use magnesium, you can use the aluminum or magnesium nitrate. There's some of us may say that can we use the sodium potassium calcium? No, that will be considered the metal will be too electro positive and not suitable for this experiment. Huh? So don't use sodium, don't use potassium, don't use calcium, don't use that. How can you say? So because there are two, two, two reactive in the ration. So what is the main problem with the student? Because they just mentioned ABC, they forgot to write down the nitrate salt solution. Some of them, they write down the nitrate salt solution, they forgot to write down the ABC. So this ABC must be both mentioned, both mentioned. So done with the four, then we come up with a purchase of the material and then the procedure. Do we need to write down the material again? No need, because all the materials is mentioned in, in the two, three, four. So we're coming up with the apparatus only. So the apparatus, mention test tubes, test tube rate, then sand paper. Sand paper is very important because you need to clean the oxide layer on the metal strip. So other than the test tube, it actually, okay, if you mention test tube, there must be the test tube rate. But some of them, they want to use a small beaker. If you mention small beakers like 50 mil, then you no need to mention the test tube. So come up with the procedure here. So what we need to do, so number one, we need to clean the metal ABC. 
So if you don't want to write ABC, you can write down the name of the metal that you have mentioned it before. So for sure we send petal. Okay, if we want to, the volume must be suitable, must be suitable. So you can pour in between two to five centimeters cubic of the solutions into the test tube. So what we're gonna do because they do a three times right. So pour about five centimeters cubic of solutions A into the three different test tubes. Then we have three, so we can put A, B, C into each of the test tube. Then for sure we need to lock the apparatus for 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 two to five minutes, right? And then what we need to do next, record the observation. We cannot say record the changes. Oh, we cannot see that observe the changes. We cannot see that observe the changes. We must mention that record the observation. Oh, we must have the keyword of record. Then finally, we come up with repeat the steps with the solution B and solution C. So this is a coming out with the procedure. You will find out that the procedure is a very simple one. For you to get the observations, right? To get the tabulations of the observations. Okay, Madam, now we don't have to put the molarity of the solution. If you want to put, yes, it's okay. If you don't want to put, it's okay as well. If you want to put the molarity, it must be in the range of 0 0.1 to 2 molar. So you mean in essay section C, no need to put concentration? No, in this question, you no need to put concentration because normally when we come up with concentration here, it will be more to the question that we want you to measure the quantitatively. Okay. So in this question, for sure, if you want to mention some variety, it's even better. The range is 0 0.1 to 2 molar. Yeah. Uh, sorry, because, uh, what kind of Experiment, we need to put the concentration quantitative. Like, like the preparation of the soluble salt and insoluble salt, you need to mention the concentration. Actually, all of the experiment in general, we need to mention that we need to mention the concentration. The best way, lah, but this one, this is a, just a common guideline. If you want to put Okay, for sure it's a good one. If you don't want to put, doesn't matter. Because here we just want to see whether they have rations occur or not occur. Okay, okay. Yeah. So what is the, okay, we would like to say that, actually what is the experiment we no need to put molarity? The experiments that involve uh, X formation of extra, you cannot put the concentration, the value of concentration. Another one is when you want to study the role of water, okay, of acid or uh, ensuring the property of the acid or alkali. That experiment we cannot put molarity. In our case, we can put molarity all, all the time. Yes. For sure, when uh, you want to student, we will ask them to write more molarity all, all the time. Yes. Uh, yeah, madam. Uh, I want to ask about, regarding the apparatus, right? Uh, other than test tube, uh, we can use more because uh, how about other containers like a uh, boiling tube? Yes, boiling tube. Yes, only as a test tube, small beaker, and boiling tube. Yes, not other than that. Yeah, not other than that. Only that. Yes. Okay. Hello. It's okay. I, I continue first to the last okay. one. Maybe you have a question. You can ask ask first. Doesn't matter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. So this is the this is a questions number nine. Then I come up with a question number ten because the questions number ten is a not common question in the acid base and so so it's a little bit different because normally previous we only describe the experiment with the preparation of the soluble so not the SPA not sodium, potassium, and ammonium. And then other than that, always come up with the question preparation of the insoluble salt, right? But the following questions is coming up with the preparation of the soluble salt of the type of SPA. Huh? Later we can come up with the next question. So the following questions 10 here is to show you the pie chart containing the percentage of ion present in the seawater, so magnesium, sodium, sulfate, and chloride. This is a question that gives you the pie chart. Then now, 
in coming out with this, they tell you that the salt is a combination of the positive ion and negative ion, right? So suggest two salts that are present in the sea water under the common salt. So some of the students, they don't actually uh, read this sentence based on the information in diagram A. They don't see this sentence. They just come up, suggest two. Oh, you ask me to suggest two. They, they're coming up with any other answer. They're just coming up with magnesium. Uh, they just come up with uh, zinc, uh, zinc, sulfide, copper, two sulfide. They come up with variety of the answer, but not hit to the need of the question. Because they say that other than the common salt, sodium chloride, you can suggest two salt. So in this case, we're going to tell them here, the question is based on the diagram. Eight, you can only do the combination magnesium chloride or magnesium sulfide or sodium sulfide. They have no other answer for that because you need to get the answer from the pie chart itself. So because the question is based on information on the diagram eight. So next question here. After this, can you describe a chemical test to verify one anion present in the suggested salt? Meaning that your anion test only can be tested for the chloride ion or sulfide ion, not other than that, or not other than that. Only two possible answers, one, only two possible answers. So here you can come up with that. So you only can have sodium sulfide, magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfide. If you don't want to write down the name, you can write down the formula as well. So for the test of the chloride ion, this is a common uh, state. It's come up with very, very brief state. So for chloride, you can add in nitric acid followed by silver nitrate solution. Oxidation, quite precipitate is formed. Then give a comment, chloride ion is present. If you don't mention chloride ion is present, but you already write test for chloride ion, meaning that no point, you don't mention point four, they also then you also can get the point for when you list down the title over there. Other than chloride, you can test for the sulfate. Eight hydrochloric acid. If you don't want to use hydrochloric acid, actually you can use a nitrate acid. So eight barium chloride solution. If not barium nitrate solution, and observation quite precipitate sulfate ions is present. For the N ion test here, the the keyword for solutions is compulsory. It's compulsory. Sorry, and then some of us will ask for this. Is that I need to mention volume? Okay, is it I need to mention apparatus? If you want to mention volume and apparatus, you must choose the correct volume, a suitable range of the volume, and then the suitable apparatus. So here, the suitable apparatus only refer to test tube and boiling tube. We don't use beaker because we, when we want to do the end ion test, we only use a small quantity of the chemical. So test tube or boiling tube. If you want to measure the volume, two to five, two to five, not more than that, not more than that. If you add in 10 centimeter cubic, and then add 10 centimeter cubic on nitrate acid, then followed by 10 centimeter cubic or silver nitrate solution, I think it will be overflow. You cannot record it correct observation. So it mentions volume, the suitable range with the test tube or boiling tube. The only apparatus is the okay is a is a boiling tube or test tube only no bigger for this uh for the uh N ion test. Okay, so please take note with that. Okay after this we come up with the essay oh, sorry before we go for the essay question I think this one no problem as well. So, can you suggest a chemical that can use to prepare the insoluble salt of magnesium and insoluble of sulfate salt? So, yeah. so, magnesium here. How come we have a magnesium So You can refer to the previous question. So, magnesium, then we can use the magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate. How it can come out with the insoluble salt? Then, we can come out with carbonate. So the question here, they ask you to name one chemical substance. So we add in sodium carbonate or potassium carbonate. Then after that, they ask you to write down the ionic equations, right? For the insoluble sulfate, so it can be barium sulfate, it can be a calcium sulfate, it can be a lactose sulfate, right? 
So you're going to choose the suitable uh, chemicals that can react with the sulfate salt, okay, to, to form the sulfate salt. So barium nitrate, okay, natural nitrate, calcium nitrate, calcium When you react with the sulfate ion, then it can come out with the insoluble salt, called formations of the insoluble salt. So point one is given with the name, okay, point two is given with the ionic equation. So same idea to be applied to the insoluble many sulfate salt as well. Done with the, this one, I don't think they have a problem. Then we're coming out with the last part of the questions. So the last part of the questions is actually coming out with this. Can you describe an experiment to prepare the common salt, the sodium chloride in the school laboratory? Because we know that here they already mentioned we're going to use the acid and alkali. Then both acid and alkali, they are soluble, they are colorless solution. Then how are we going to know that when the acid can react exactly on with the alkali? Therefore, this experiment, we must use the acid-base indicator. So the experiment is regarding the acid-base titrations, right? So the question here, they say that, okay, you will know to describe then using a suitable acid and alkali. So point one is given to this. You're going to give me the name of the alkali and then the acid, right? Then now, when we want to carry out the experiment here, must of this experiment, qualitative, okay? Or quantitative, quantitative, so volume and concentration is very important. Must mentions in this experiment. So for the conica plus, the range for the volume is 20 to 100, okay? Per time, concentrations is 0 0.1 to 2 molar. So here we can say that, uh, let's say we want to fix one figure, so 20 centimeter cubic of okay, one molar of sodium hydroxide solutions is poured into a conical plug. Then after that, we add phenaphthalene into the conical plug. So choose the suitable uh, AC base indicator. The problem here is the spelling for the phenaphthalene. The spelling must be correct how huh? the spelling must be correct after that what we need to do okay then we say that 0 0.1 to 2 molar of hydrochloric acid is poured into the spirit and then the initial reading is recorded why we must record the initial reading because we later on we want to find out what is the volume of the acid that we want to use to exactly neutralize the sodium hydroxide solution so record the initial reading so you'll find out that this type of question is very stingy, right? Because they need to have two actions over here. You add in the AC into buret, I told you need to record the initial reading. Then next one, for sure is a very common one, what we need to do, flow the AC into the conical plus until the pink color change to color solutions. You need to mention the observation. You need to mention the observation to show that when it's the end point of the reaction. So, add in acid until the pink color change to colorless, then we record the final direct reading. So, for the point number seven, you actually need to show the calculation in order to show people that what is the volume of acid that is required to neutralize the alkali azale. So, method here is you can just show the simple uh, uh, tabulation of data Let's say you write down in, uh, initial uh, period reading is equal to 0, 0.00, or you come up with the V1 centimeter cubic, or final period reading equal to V2 centimeter cubic, then how to get the volume of acid? So final period reading minus initial period reading. So you get V centimeter cubic. V centimeter cubic. Must shows in the calculation for this. So majority, they cannot get the point number seven because they don't show in the in calculation. Then after that, after you get the volume, V centimeter cubic, then we say that we just measure V centimeter cubic of acid. And that's why if we say 50 centimeter cubic, it's a 50 centimeter cubic of sodium hydroxide solution and just pour into a beaker. So now you already know that what is the volume of acid that is required to exactly neutralize the 50 centimeter cubic of sodium hydroxide solutions, right? So you just 
more than 50 centimeter cubic sodium hydroxide into a beaker, then you just add in V centimeter cubic of acid into it. So this part will be considered as a neutralization occur. So means that we must repeat the experiment. How we must repeat the experiment on it. But some of them they say that if I mention this, how I'm going to change this point number eight. If I don't want to mention that V centimeter cubic of acid is poured into the and the twenty or fifty centimeter cubic of the sodium hydroxide is put into beaker, then can I just say that? Repeat the experiment by adding C centimeter cubic of acid into 50 centimeter cubic of sodium hydroxide in a conical plug. Yes, acceptable as well. So, means that show calculation, then you mention repeat the experiment. When we say repeat the experiment, we are using the same apparatus like the before this. Huh? So, repeat the experiment by adding. Uh, v centimeter cubic of acid into the sodium hydroxide solution. Acceptable as well. Then after reaction, this time we can get a pure salt solution and water, right? Without the presence of the final product. So what we're going to do? So for sure, we will say that we transfer the solution into the evaporating ditch. Then we want to highlight here, heat the mixture until saturated. Don't ever say that until concentrated. Why? Because once you heat it, once the water evaporates, the solution immediately becomes become concentrated. But you see, when you remove a little bit of water, when the solution becomes concentrated, a little bit compared to before before that, you see, it will be sagu, it will be crystallized to form the crystal. No right. That's why we need to highlight the keyword, heat the mixture until saturated. Once it's saturated, we cool down. Once we cool down, then it form you with the crystal, then you filter it. So that's all go for to the 10 marks over here. So this is the one we coming up with the preparation of the soluble salt type of the XPA. Okay, sodium, potassium, and ammonia. Okay. So now I can open to the question. It's almost 4.30. Yes. Hmm. Jigu, Jigu, any questions you want to ask? Uh, yeah, madam. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Very clear. Yeah, yeah. For these questions, right? Um, uh, normally we prepare this soluble sort of SPA. We use titration as the embase. But, but because the questions didn't mention, okay, we need to use titrations. Can the student write, we just measure, for example, 25 centimeter cubic of uh, 1.0 more dm minus 3 uh, sodium hydroxide into uh, blah, 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 HCl? Cannot. Because when you add in like this, uh, you, you don't know that whether that the rations is as very neutral. Like the AC, then we prepare, or the alkali, then we prepare. We don't know which one is a little bit excess. When you just mention the volume and then of the AC and then you just add in into the alkali, maybe it has the slight, uh, slightly different. Then you cannot get the pure salt. Or it can be either AC or your alkali in excess. Because you measure by measuring solid. Right, right. right. Okay. So if you just add in like the way you add in into beaker, then you will totally lost all of the marks. Then you can your students point nine and point ten. But, but actually, theory. yeah, yeah. Actually, according to the theory, right? Because if uh, both of the uh, acid and alkaline with the same uh, volume and same concentrations, okay, they suppose we react completely to form the yeah. salt and water. Yeah, we, so, we know. Actually, actually, it's it's not fair. Uh, if if the marking scheme right, like this must must force the student to use titrations. Because of the concept of this, how we can ensure that the acid can exactly neutralize the alkali. Because mm. no matter how we prepare the concentration, the standard solution that we prepare, right, they must yeah. have the differences with that. So in this experiment, because we want to prepare the pure salt, then they need to go through the acid-based titration. Yeah. Because okay. the original the method. If you want to prepare SDS salt, so you're gonna to have the acid based titration. So teacher, you should uh, guide your students once they prepare SPA salt, so 
in mass with acid base titration. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, any questions? Are there questions for this or other part? Of this? Okay, cikgu, kalau tidak ada lagi, uh, mungkin kita akan tamat sampai sini. Kecuali yes. cikgu ada lagi. Ya. Yeah. Okay, tak ada. Mana? Okay, jadi uh, terlebih dahulu kita nak mengucaplah banyak terima kasih kepada Madam Aziz Kalau kerana telah memberi kita satu